Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome back to the channel within the channel. Monday and guess what I did? I got it a little better. She did that. How, why did you do that? Why, why did you do that? <laughs> well, I saw Kasha at Creative Pet Keeping. I saw her video on the tank and I said, Globettas. I've never really had any interest in glow fish, but Globettas? Hmm, interesting. Well, I was at PetSmart picking up, I don't know, some random item. And there it's was- Mistake number one. <laughs> there was the display. Yeah. And, you know, you just walk over, hey. Cause you know, I, I 99% of was my- Was the display glowing? Well, it was, it was very glowy. And you know, my personality is generally like understated and, and very natural and everything. However, there is a part of me that really loves anything sparkly and colorful. So I was sucked in and then my, my eyes met his eyes and I said, you're coming home with me and I'm gonna take a whole bunch of stuff too. So I got the tank cause you need the light and the tank was cheaper, five bucks cheaper. And then all the stuff that you get to pick out, it was, it was actually really kind of fun. It was a lot of stuff. It There's, was a lot of stuff. Yeah. And, and it's a little side note too. Uh, they have the display with like, I don't know, a few choice pieces of plants and stuff. You don't need to just pick from there. Go around the, the, the other side, like the big long aisle with all the stuff. All the other stuff will work too. Just, um, you know, the more brightly colored stuff works too. And you get, you just, you'll be there for hours picking out your stuff. So that's a lot of stuff. Uh, by the way, Kasha from Creative Pet Keeping, she's also gonna do a video. So we wanna talk a little bit today about, we're gonna look at the setup, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna talk a little bit about whether or not you think glow bettas, whether we think glow bettas should be in the hobby, glow fish in general. would love to hear from you in the comments section below. Yeah. Do you think glow bettas should be a thing? By the way, if you hear some water running or some rustling, <laughs> Luke is in the fish room. He's actually doing his standard weekly maintenance. So you might see him in the background or you might hear some water sucking noises. Yeah. That's just him doing a good job. Welcome to the weekend in primetime aquatics. That's right. So glow bettas, friend or foe? Abomination or absolutely awesome. So let's take a look at the tank. Why don't you tell us what you did with this tank okay. and what well, you're- Well, first I think you should start out with him. Him. Okay, it's, him. I picked out a he. It did have yeah. he's and she's. I picked him out because I named him Slimer from one of the best movies in 1984, the original Ghostbusters. The tank, well, I picked out a handful of plants and I wasn't originally gonna do it. I was not gonna get the mushroom because I said, I don't get it. But then I saw it displayed and I said, oh yeah. You got it. Oh yeah, I'm getting yeah. that. It looks like an underwater light. It looks like illuminated. And I picked out some, some plants and I kind of clustered them. It was, it was really fun. FYI, I did have, <laughs> I look like a real weirdo, setting up my scape on the floor of the PetSmart because just as real plants, you know, they have the same characteristics. They, some are really floppy you know, and rubbery so and like crypts. Glow plants have the same characteristics they as can. real plants. Okay. They can. So I also picked out some silk, you know, the fabric ones, they work too, because I wanted some structure that would stay up and it was much easier to, to scape. So you will have the same challenges putting plastic plants in your scape as you will for any other scape. Just, I didn't use uh, any root tabs on this scape and also um I massive have not algae bro bloom i don't know why <laughs> did you put happen? fertilizer in there yeah i'm just so used to doing it <laughs> i don't think your fake plants needed the fertilizer this time yeah but they're all the plants are doing very well right now they are now yeah i see that they're responding really well to the the black light and whatever else is in there yes. so yeah so let's talk a little bit about this thing called a glow beta mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious what you think just generally speaking is it good for the hobby not good for the hobby i know you haven't really wrapped your head around it completely, but I what are your thoughts? I haven't, because I've never been a proponent of glowfish, but uh, here I am. Well, I like it because I like anything unique. Anything different, that's what makes fish keeping fun, right? My tanks will look totally different than yours. Mine are smaller, I have tiny fish, you have big fish, you have piles of rocks, and I have cool stuff. <laughs> And this is just yet another thing that can maybe draw a new fish keeper into the hobby. My, my issue, my concern would be if somebody considers it like a decoration. Like, oh, this is be fun. Okay. And then like the, the newness wears off and then they're like, meh. So it's like any other fish. It, it's still a betta. It's a, it's a fish. It's a little living creature that you need to take care of. So 
and that's what I really don't like about the, the boxes, the kits, because nowhere does it say, this is what you need for your betta. You need to, to give them cover. You need to uh, put plants like kind of high up. They like to be high up. Nothing that just says here, put in some weird plants and sure in a one gallon tank and it'll be all set. So the other aspect of course is the fact that these organisms are genetically modified. We call them GMO, genetically modified organisms. And some people have a serious problem with that. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you've got this fish and you've got a lot of betta stuff. By the way, if you want more information on betta's, betta care, we'll have that video in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. But you've also done a lot of setups with some really cool, naturally looking, wonderfully colored bettas. Yes. And we'll put those down in the description below Even as the, well. The other polar opposite would be the Mahachai. The sure. wild bettas that are the polar opposite of the neon glowing bettas. Absolutely. And now we've got this fish that is already naturally very colorful and very beautiful. And now mm -hmm. we have genetically modified this organism to produce coloration that is unnatural. And so there's a couple ways to look at it. And you know, just GMO in general, it can be a benefit, something we talk about in my biology class when it comes to genetically modified crops or genetically modified animals that can resist, you know, when it comes to crops, maybe they can resist certain insects or infections, grow a lot more food a lot faster. So there are some economical benefits to GMO, but then with this, there's really not, it's not a life-saving thing. It's just, we've done some stuff to a better genetically to make it Flores, if you will, but, under certain lights, and the, I think I have the a question, Professor. Yeah. Uh, isn't that what breeders normally do, though? They That's pick the best of the stock, a fantastic, you know, point. and make them prettier, absolutely. make them live longer. So, in line breeding is, is what you're talking about. You're absolutely correct. That's a really good point. It's something that we've done since the beginning of time, where you selectively breed organisms to produce traits that wouldn't normally exist in nature. That's the vast majority like, of your bettas. That would be your guppies, fat chickens, uh, absolutely, you know, the fat parrot turkeys. fish. So, when it comes to fish. This is just another step. Now, again, love to hear from you. Is it something we should be doing, something not? Obviously, yeah. the big key here, if you've got fish that are you're introducing genes, you're changing their genetics, and now because of that, they have a quality of life issue, that is a, yeah, big, that's problem. a big problem. And it still remains to be seen with these bettas, whether or not that's going to happen, because they're new. Yeah. Right? You haven't, they haven't been on the market very long. So we're going to have to see, are they going to last a year or six months, or are they going to last three, four, five years with, with some of the time. bettas would, would eventually, what you'd eventually see. So th that's the big key there. Do you want to hear a funny story? Sure. What, as soon as, it, as soon as we set up the tank, um, I put it right next to the pea puffers, Eeny and Meeny, and they were, they were seriously checking <laughs> it out. They thought they, they saw a like, ghost. <laughs> they were seriously spending time looking yeah. over there and like, ghost, what really? is that? And they're all so slow, they can't run away from the fish <laughs> ghost fast enough. They're yeah. so cute. Their little eyes got even bigger. Yeah, that's very scary. So yeah, that new tank, it does kind of stand out on your nano wall. <laughs> it does. Uh, you've got some other things going on in that nano wall too. What, yes, can I you do. share a little bit? I mean, don't give it away, but what do we got well, going on? Okay. I'm actually really excited about it. And it's yeah. not even my thing. Originally when we, when we set up the nano wall, I was very clear like this is kind of, well, that's kind of been thrown out the wall. Uh, Throwing up the wall. the wall. Oh, that's cool. Uh, hopefully next week, maybe the week after. I don't know when we can get this up and running, but I'm um, very excited. Very excited for, there you go. I'm just excited for what we're going to do. It's going to be pretty cool. It's definitely a turn in a direction. We didn't necessarily, it's not like huge, like mind blowing. Well, no. well, maybe it will be, but it's just a direction that we weren't necessarily expecting when we, when you kind of drew out the nano wall, it wasn't part of the plans. No. And now it's become part of the plans <laughs> in our living room and our dining room's a mess because of it. Pretty much. So, yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, that's again, would love to hear from you. It's more, what do you think about these these new types of fish? Would yeah. you get one? Would you buy one? Yeah. Is it something that you would encourage a, a friend, a family member to to purchase? The tank, um, FYI, um, I'm I'm kind of curious. Well, I'm kind of excited if this glow thing, you know, just goes on the wayside. It can be, you know, you can modify it and just sure. it could become a regular tank, which is cool. But my question too, also, um, if you're going to be, you know, putting down a comment. Uh, do you like the name Slimer? I do. But if you were to get something glowing, what would you call it? Because I'm thinking there's going to be some pretty fun fun names that I would I've call never it even thought of. No, that's he looked like a snot to me all the way. I don't like that name. Yeah. I'm not going to... No. No? Okay. All right. So, that's the video. <laughs> that's the video. Thanks for watching. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. Okay? 
And check Fun out stuff. Kasha's video. She's going to talk about Globetas from a breeding perspective. Yeah. We'll yeah. see you in the next one. Bye. You got to wonder what fish think about that too, especially the glow fish. When they're like, hey, w wait a minute, man. What's going on with me? Like if you show a picture of them in the mirror, yeah. like, what, like, what's what going is on wrong with you? With you? That's yeah. crazy. I look a little weird. <laughs>